to show you a spreadsheet I put together for projectile motion on on the Earth and not not our moon but just a moon. Um, so the particulars are um, that we will assume that the Earth has um, gravitational acceleration vertically down of 10 meters per second per second and the moon, um, a moon, is half of that, 5 meters per second per second, that we launch the projectile um, with a speed of 50 meters per second um, at an inclination with respect to the ground of 30 degrees and and so what comes out of that is that it has uh, a, a, an initial x velocity of 43.3 meters per second and an initial y velocity of um, 25 meters per second um, and the way these um, to the x and the y velocities are obtained is simply by taking v naught for 43.3 the x velocity um, 50 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees um, gives this and 50 meters per second times the sine of 30 gives that. Um, so the spreadsheet now um, has um, quite a number of columns. Um, the first one is time. Um, I do things in half second intervals and the second column is the x velocity um, which never changes. There's never any change in the x velocity for projectile motion. It's always 43.3. Um, and so that makes the computation for the uh, displacement in the x direction very simple. Um, to get the displacement between 0 and 0.5 seconds, one simply multiplies 0 0.5 times 43.3 and gets a constant displacement of 21.7. The cumulative x, uh, delta x displacement is simply adding these all up as we go, so that shows you essentially what the position, x position, x position is. Um, the um, y velocity, um, instantaneous y velocity, um, for the Earth is starts at 25, and then since you have a 10 meter per second per second acceleration every second it, it decreases by 10 so you can see from 25 to 1 second um, it decreases by 10 goes from 25 to 15 but in half a second it would do half of that so since I'm doing half a second uh, time deltas um, these decrease by 5 um, and then the average this is how we would uh, figure out what the y displacement is uh, is going to be, the, so this number right here is the average of these two numbers and this number right here is the average of these two numbers. And so from that um, I can then compute the um, from the average velocity over half second time intervals I can complete, compute the uh, displacement during that half second interval. Uh, in fact it's just the average velocity y velocity over half a second times a half a second gives gives you that. Um, and then similarly I've done a, um, a cumulative um, delta ye which tells you what the y position is. Now I do the same thing for the moon. Um, the moon now has uh, half the gravitational constant of the earth and so in one second, instead of it decreasing by 10, it decreases by 5, and in half a second, it decreases by 2.5. So that's, that explains these numbers. Um, this is the computation for the average velocity for the uh, moon. So 23.8 then is the average of 25 and 22.5. Um, and then the delta ym is uh, 20, uh, th th this 11.9 is the average velocity times 0 0.5 so and and so on down the, co the, uh, the column here and then the cumulative delta y then shows you what the position is okay so so what I've done here this next graph if I can scroll down if I can scroll down here is I have plotted um, as a function of uh, x versus the y position, um, let's see, I want to say that I've plotted the 
horizontal position versus the vertical position for both the Earth and the Moon. And so on the horizontal axis we have um, the uh, um, distance in the x direction this travels and in the y direction we have the distance in the y direction it, it travels the vertical direction. And so th th these are both in meters. Um, I show you the data points and these data points are shown every half second since that was my delta t. Um, so some interesting things come out here. Um, first of all you see that the, um, the, the height um, to which the uh, projectile goes on the moon, that's this orange line, is twice as high as the height to which it goes on the Earth. It goes to a little bit more than 30 meters on the Earth. It goes to um, low 60s, it's a factor of two, um, on, on this moon. Um, the range for the moon is also um, twice as large. We'll, we'll understand this better when we go to um, um, when we do forces a little bit later. Um, if you look at the dots um, which represent the half second time intervals, you can see that all the all the dots are lined up for both the moon and the earth curve and that represents the fact uh, lined up in a, in a horizontal direction. In other words, this is immediately under this, this is immediately under that. That represents the fact that the x um, velocity is the same for both and it never varies during the whole projectile motion. Um, so what's different is the vertical motion and that, that's a reflection of the fact that the um, acceleration for the moon is half what it is for the earth. And to show that a little bit more clearly I've made a, a, a second graph and that's this is a time versus the displacement for the earth in um, each half second time interval and a similar uh, quantity for the moon. And so um, you can see here that the um, vertical displacements for the moon are decreasing faster um, because the acceleration is larger and for the moon those vertical displacements are decreasing more slowly. So the, so the, the flight time for the moon for this projectile which is launched with the same initial conditions is uh, is is uh, quite a bit longer. In fact it's a factor of two longer than um, than what it is for the, the projectile uh, launched on the earth.